if you want to look up a certain address for a client or whatever you have in your system, you make a database or a list of all their names and somewhere on another sheet probably you are going to make a drop down box and show the address. And finally I will show you how to print it. You could use a database like this. The problem is if you ever add new ones at the bottom of the list they will not be included in your formulas unless you change this into a table. The shortcut to do so is Ctrl T and it says where is your range. You click OK and it will create a nice formatted database. I, I did that already on this sheet. So now when you add new people at the bottom of the list they will automatically be inserted in this table. What is the name of the table when I go to design? Then it's by default table 1 unless you change that name. I will leave it that way. And the next one will be table 2 etc. So now we are going to make the lookup list. First of all we put in here a drop down box that allows you to do this work. You do that with data, data validation and make this a list type of validation and the source for it is equals indirect table 1 contact name. So it will find that source and do the work. So that's what we did here. And then we put a formula in this one that we can copy down. That's a VLOOKUP formula. You look up B1 locked. So when I copy it down it will remain B1. Table 1 is the name of that table. And we want to look in which column. I use the row function A2. So when I copy that down it will be row A3. It will give me the number 2. That is the row of A2. And then number 3, 4, 5. Those are the columns in that table. Okay. And false means we, we want an exact match. So that formula we can copy down very easily. And now everything will beautifully update when we change the name of that person. Then I added a print button here. So I can print it out. The printing is done in Word. So I created a VBA code that is going to do this. Uh, if you want to get that button there, then you go to developer. If developer is not available, then you go first to file options and you make sure that in the customize ribbon that the developer is turned on. Otherwise you will not see that tab. So you go to developer and then insert from the second list a button. I'm going to do it one time just to show you, show you. and you draw it there and then you go back to developer and say to that button view the code and we are going to put some VBA code in there. Uh, don't forget later on to turn the design mode off, otherwise that button will be floating on the sheet and is not really embedded in it. So I'm turning that off. If I turn it back on, then you have to select that thing first. I'm going to delete it. Okay. So we are going to do something similar for this button. Developer view the code and there is the code. And I'm going back to this screen to make sure that I turn that design mode off. Developer design mode off so the thing is now accessible. So each time I click on it it's going to run a certain code. The code is here. It is on that sheet 1 billing and you 
make sure that you use that command button that I did not rename, so it's command button 1, and it gives me the click event unless you want something else, but in this case you want the click event. Then I declare two variables of the word application. Make sure that you have that accessible by going to Tools, References, and select Microsoft Word Object Library, whatever version you have, and turn that on. Okay, cancelling it. And then you de can declare two variables of the Word application type and of the document type. Then I declare two value type variables, a string type and an integer type. And I say to this sheet, sheet 1, give me from range A1, that is cell A1, the current region. That is actually the entire range around it. Let me show you. So A1, so that is actually this range. And we want from that range, from the collection of columns, number 2. And then we loop through the cells starting in cell 1, 2 from that current region, column 2, the number of rows, count rows, and we are going to put the first address in there. Let me show you again. So we put in there this one, and then that one, and that one, so we go in that column down by row number. And then we say to S address, give me what is already in S address. In the beginning, that is nothing. And then take from the current region, columns 2, dot, cells. The first cell, I is 1, and then 2, 3, 4, in that first column of column 2. And then hook onto it a carriage return. For you want that on the next line in your address. And do that until you have reached the rows count. And then make sure that that last VB carriage return is out of it. Okay. So we take the left of S address, the total length minus 1. Then we set the variable O word, which is of the word application type, to a new word application program. Then we set O doc to a new document by adding to the collection of documents in O Word a new document. Then that O doc we use the envelope dot print out and the print out has a few arguments. The first argument is the exact address. I don't need that one. The next one is the address that is the S address variable. Then I don't use all those arguments. I happen to use that one, which is basically the size of the envelope. Then I can close that document, I can quit Word without saving anything, and I highlight cells 1, 2, select. That should do the job. When I click on print, this address should be printed. I don't have my printer on, and besides you could not see that anyway, but I will show you that it's there. And it's printing, but it can't print. But it will nicely print that address. I'm going to cancel it. Okay. And we are back here, and we can start a new one. I wish you good luck with Visual Basic, but first of all the simple stuff, VLOOKUP. If you don't want to go into Visual Basic, skip that part.